Okay folks, let's pick up where I left off. I had the tube socket adapter in and I meant to check the 6.3 volt heater winding of the uh, transformer. So let's get back to the 6F6 underneath. Here's the uh, key and the heaters will be 2 and 7. You can follow along in the picture in picture. And you can see a very low DC resistance, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 ohms. I think we're good there. Let's jump up here to the uh, rectifier tube and uh, do the same for the uh, 5 volt winding. Again, you can reference the pitcher and pitcher, but the uh, filaments will be 2 and 8. So from the key, 1, 2, and number 8. So I think we're good there. Let me jump back to the uh, input side of the uh, transformer, that being the primary. Give it a check. Here's the uh, two leads coming through that were frayed going to the uh, power cord. So we can just come off of this location. And just north of 10 ohms, that's what I would expect to see. Let's we'll see if the uh, on-off switch is working. That would be here. All right, so I think we're good there. Let's get back over to the uh, high voltage winding off of the rectifier, see what we have at that point. You can reference the uh, schematic again that I'm using. It's a, a Zenith, but uh, I think it's going to get me pretty close here. These radios were very similar in design. So if you look at the uh, picture in picture, you'll see that uh, pins number four and six are the two plates on the rectifier tube. We had a 5Y3 here in place instead of the 5W4, which is the metal tube. No big deal. But we'll check across here, see what we have. and it looks like we're open. Now you'll notice on the drawing itself we need to uh, identify the uh, center tap position which is going to be the most negative point of the circuit and we can locate that here by the two electrolytic capacitors assuming they're hooked in correctly. One goes to uh, chassis ground. It's not that one. It's going to be this one that floats going back to the uh, terminal strip. So this most likely is our uh, return line, which is the uh, center tap to the uh, power transformer. So let's check here and go to each one of the uh, plates and see what we read. Okay, we're open there. And we're good here at uh, just north of 700 ohms. So what that tells us again, the transformer is definitely open, that part of the winding. So we're good from the center tap back to the uh, high voltage side on one side of the plate and uh, not so lucky on the other side. So that's probably what put this uh, radio on the shelf at some point in time. So we'll have to deal with the uh, power transformer. Of course, I could have just a frayed wire. Many times under the uh, shell itself, there's a uh, solder connection. So I'm going to pull this out and uh, double, triple check for DC resistance just to confirm the uh, transformer itself is bad. Then we'll look and see how to uh, mitigate that issue. Winding here that tested good is definitely uh, defective as well. Or it sure appears to be that way. And you can see the other winding is uh, definitely still open. Let's go back to the uh, primary side just for a moment. Show you guys something else I discovered. Again, you always want to check all your windings against the housing itself, which I've done already off camera. But one thing you'll find interesting 
you'll see I've got DC resistance between the uh, primary and the secondary winding. So that's definitely not a good thing. This transformer, I bet, sat there and just heated up. When we take this apart, I expect to be able to actually see the damage. So uh, just another reason not to ever just plug in one of these radios. We've all done it, I've done it, but it's not the uh, safest thing to do. I also noticed some DC resistance back from the uh, primary back to the center tap as well. You can see just over 1K and then even back to one of the high voltage windings here. Let me get a, a screwdriver, nut driver, and take this thing apart. We'll take a look at it inside. All right, let me pull the leads through this side, and then we'll look at this uh, winding here a little closer, see if we see anything. Okay, you can see the fish paper there. Definitely looks like it's uh, been heated up at some point. A little toasty, as you can see. So an internal failure of the uh, power transformer. I think we can cut into this and uh, pull a few layers back and we'll come back and look at what we have. You can see the way this particular transformer was constructed. The 5 volt secondary winding is uh, on the outside. And you can see the uh, winding direction is noted here. So the 5 volt winding was wound clockwise 31 turns. I'll measure the uh, wire gauge and uh, document that in the length of the wire as well in just a bit. Let me go ahead and cut into this next layer of uh, fish paper and see what uh, winding is next. I would expect it to be the uh, 6.3 volt winding so it looks like I got down to the uh, damaged area, the 6.3 volt winding. This is where it was taped down. Interesting to uh, dissect this and uh, actually find the damage. Not repairable for sure. So folks, thanks for watching. I'll uh, go ahead and decide on my mitigation steps and uh, start looking at restoring what I can until we uh, source another uh, power transformer. I've got about seven or eight. I'll uh, look at the specs and uh, see what we can do.